Welcome to the Yo Podcast, an interview series where we spotlight leading designers, developers, and makers. I'm your host, Rob Hope, and today we have Pablo Stan, a designer, artist, and musician based in Mexico. We discuss the creative side of his childhood gang, the importance of having fun with your team, just why did he leave the Roboto NFT community, monetizing his AI stock site, and the importance of details in all aspects of design. Oh, and if you hear punk rock snippets throughout the interview, it's from Pablo's very own punk band, The Dead Stanleys. Yo, Pablo. Welcome to the Yo Podcast, my man. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, man? How are you? I'm <sighs> good. So you have done a ton of interviews and hmm. I'm just thinking let's get straight into it. I'm going to go pretty serious. Ooh. And are you ready? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. I'm wondering... If your fascination with drawing butts okay. is influenced from getting your butt kicked a dozen times growing up being in a gang, System. or Baja California having so many hundred Fahrenheit days that you just saw dozens of butts on the beaches in San Felipe. I think uh, a little bit of both. Uh, there are a lot of butts in San Felipe. Like everybody wears a short, so you don't get to see a lot of butts. Like shorts and and t shirt. That's that's how we. That's a Mexican way to get in the beach. Just like a with a white t shirt and and long shorts and no uh, no flesh at all. Just like cover as much as possible because uh, it's, it's so hot. I don't know. I suppose it's sore. So it's not like Brazil. Uh, not like Brazil. No, I think uh, we're too too prude. Like a too like I, I suppose like our Catholic thing <laughs> that we're just like oh we just like uh, want to cover ourselves but uh but yeah like uh hey yeah uh, butts is a very serious topic in my uh doodle career so you know digging digging deep into research some crazy stories about being in a gang when you're young you know from 12 years old so obviously some terrible stories you know a bit of violence and so on but there also was a positive where it's kind of started your creative career you know you're getting into graffiti spraying murals um yeah I, I i just think of like the constraints then like you have a wall and that's your canvas and you have a spray can and it's like you, you don't have all this online noise it's like it's just you the wall the can and like you're gonna get it done was it like quite a quite a good time yeah i i, I would say it was a different kind of noise though uh because you you I, I did get all the noise from uh, the people passing by and just like shouting, just like, hey, like criminals. Like, because you you see a, a graffiti artist and back in those days, graffiti wasn't considered uh, as much as an art form as it is now uh, and less in my town. So <laughs> maybe New York, it was already at that time considered just like a, a very uh, cool, hip art form. But in my town, which is like considered as something that... Uh, you you wanted to kick uh, uh, the, the graffiti artist's butt uh, because they were uh, destroying the city's look. So so yeah, like uh, doing murals, uh, there's a lot of uh, people passing by and just like they would say, "Oi, pinta tu culo," which means paint your butt, uh, <laughs> like, more butts, uh, paint your ass. That, that's that that's what they would say. That and also like as a as an artist, like and you you, you mentioned the, the the gang, it was like. Part of yeah, like part of uh, uh, of being a gang, we had our creative department. It was uh, it, and and I felt like the director of our creative department, you know. So that was my first experience. You're right, uh, and and so th there were others uh, involved in the criminal activity of the gang. Uh, other directors, I was not so involved with that. I was like, I, I was more interested in the creative side, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, 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 but whenever I would do a mural, like all of them will come and some of them will help, you know, and I will tell them like, it was, uh, maybe it was also like a, one of the first times when I got to tell people like, uh, like delegate some stuff. It's like almost like painting by numbers, you know, I would like draw the lines. It's like, Hey, grab this thing and paint this thing with this one and just do it inside the lights go, you know, but a lot of them will come and there will be loitering. Is that the word loitering around like uh, the, the the mural creation? Like a project manager. Yeah. yeah. And, and and they will want to include themselves in the mural. The mural could be like, I, I used to be like very, I mean, like most 
I don't know, like teenagers will have our own uh, way of seeing the world and we, we wanted to like uh, change the world somehow. So I would use my murals to just like uh, put my political messages out there. It was like, a, I mean, imagine a 50 year old like doing that kind of stuff, 14, 50 year old. So uh, I, I was trying to change the world. You were expressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, like, for example, back in those days, there was a, a huge uh, war happening in, well, uh, like a real kind of a revolution movement in Mexico, uh, 1994. It was like uh, the Zapatista movement. And it was like uh, mm, uh, in, in Chiapas, there was this movement of like uh, eight people who were fighting for the rise for indigenous uh, uh, people. Uh, they were, they felt like they were abandoned by the government and they were not being taken care of and they wanted to reclaim their, their land and a lot of stuff that was happening. And I wanted to involve myself and I made a mural uh, about uh, Chiapas. And, it's fantastic. And, but it was like, I, I, I didn't know what I was, uh, like, uh, still to this point, I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I pretend and I, I want to involve myself and I want to include myself somehow in the conversation. <laughs> and back in those days, murals was the way. A huge shout out to our season sponsor, Webflow, who allow us to build websites with the power of code without writing any. You can take control of a website's HTML code, CSS styles, and JavaScript animations, all within a stunning visual canvas. Webflow has also launched Localization, an end-to-end -end solution for customizing your site for a worldwide audience. You can build with localized content directly in the designer. As you add locales, for example French, you can easily switch between them and preview how each site looks for each before publishing. It's great to know you can customize static pages and CMS content specifically for a language. Furthermore, you can add localized images and alt text, you can show or hide certain elements, and you can even adjust typography and styles per locale to accommodate for different length headlines, fonts, and more. Webflow is totally free to get going, and you only start paying when you need to go live. Head over to webflow.com for your next website build. Would you say that, you know, for other designers out there, I know this is a total tangent, but to experiment in like, a completely non-digital multi like discipline and just pick up some spray cans and just start you know doing the inside of your garage you think you're going to learn something different about design i mean i suppose like in any creative endeavor uh if it is a canvas in which you're going to be painting like suddenly you start like a realizing that uh you cannot zoom out uh you have to walk to the other side of the uh, the street to, to actually zoom out and see the whole thing, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, when you're in the wall, like it's really hard to see proportion, you know, and it's really hard to, if you're drawing something and you, the wall is here, imagine trying to design like a, a, a full page, a website with everything zoomed in and you cannot zoom out. No know? command minus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no command minus. You have to be always zoomed in with the screen here. So, uh, and, and so, yeah, like it, it's, it's kind of cool because you, like now uh, we've been doing murals more, but I suppose like in a more professional way. Uh, and now we kind of prepare, we put a grid because yeah. we understand how hard it can be just like loose uh, uh, like proportions when you're once you're drawing. Run out of wool. Uh, uh, yeah. Like uh, when, whenever you're writing like a banner for like a happy birthday for someone, then suddenly you run, run out of a banner. <laughs> like it, it, you don't want that to happen at a wall. You know, you could just like add another wall. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, uh, but yeah, back in those days, uh, th there was n nothing like that. So just got to wing it, you know. You you also quoted back in the day, um, you falsified letters from your school saying you needed <laughs> uh, spray pans for school uh, spray cans for school projects. I got hardware stores to donate some. I almost feel like that is the 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 olden day piracy. <laughs> that is like the Photoshop cracking right there. Oh, dude, that was my first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, but yeah, man, like, uh, you're right. Like, uh, I, I had to, I, so they, they, I don't know that the school wanted to hit be hip and just like, what are the kids doing these days? And as opposed like back in those days, like they knew that like some of us were into graffiti and, and into like spray painting walls. So the school actually provided walls for different classrooms. Like a, every classroom will get a wall in the school. So I got a letter for that wall specifically. So I finished that mural and then it's like, oh, okay, now I need, 
I can use this letter for other walls, not just here. So, uh, so yeah, I just keep using that, uh, that letter for other stuff. And back in those days, there was, I don't know, like a, I, I know I sound like a, like an old man. Oh, back in my days, but it was, it was kind of simpler, simpler times, I guess. Uh, yeah, man. It's, it, it was just like nice to just like go to hardware stores and ask for this thing. There's a beauty in the yeah. simplicity. You had one thing to do and there weren't any notifications popping over the wall. Nope. No, 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 that. It was just uh, cars honking at you and that was, those were the notifications. <laughs> Should we break on into a game? You ready for Ooh, a game? Okay, cool. Yeah, let's, let's, let's play. This game is called No Context. No Context. So okay. all I'm going to do is give you two options and you need to shoot back either of them. No context given okay. about the item I'm sending you. And no context needed, no explanation needed. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hamburger menus or meatball menus? Uh, Benson the context, but hamburger makes. Uh, there is no context. It's, God, God damn it. You, you're right. There's no context. Pablo, learn the lesson, learn the rules. Hamburgers. Margarita Monday or Taco Tuesday? Taco Tuesday, of course. Fiesta Friday. Or siesta Sunday? Uh, siesta Sunday. Making music or drawing doodles? Oh man, Make, making music for sure. December 25th or June 18th? <laughs> uh, it's uh, June 18th, yeah. Webflow or Framer? Ah, Webflow, man. Yeah. Bongo Butt or Samba Butt? Bongo Butt for <laughs> sure. Shitty Prompter or Doodle Ipsum? Dude. Oh, uh... uh Doodle lips up. Black t-shirt <laughs> or black t-shirt? Uh, the, uh, the the second one sounded like it was a little more, <laughs> more darker. <laughs> Medicina or Rani Tadina? <laughs> uh, Medicina. Inter or Gordita? Gordita. Always. Always Gordita is the best. And lastly, zombies or vampires? Oh, zombies. Um, not so much into vampires. I have another serious question here. This one is from Figma Design Wizard, <laughs> Vijay Verma. Yo, Pablo, I have a really fun question for you. Suppose we are living with zombies and you were tasked with designing the packaging for a snacks aimed at zombies. What would your thought process be like? How would you decide taglines, imagery, and the most important color scheme to appeal to your undead audience. Well, I, I'm going to think that they, they're looking for something pinkish because they're, they're into brains. <laughs> so, um, like in, so gray and pink, gray matter and pinkish, uh, brain. So th those are my, uh, primary colors. Uh, I think uh, uh, I will use iconogra iconography more than typography because they, they're zombies and maybe they, they've lost their ability to read. And uh, how do you know someone is vegan? They tell you they're vegan, right? Well, as uh, someone who is producing zombie snacks, I would make a vegan option. And um, instead of brains, there will be grains. Oh, <laughs> you did not just make that up. <laughs> Oh, bravo, bravo. Okay, so, I mean, I got another serious question here. Okay. This next question isn't for Pablo Stanley. It's for the Layer Slayer. Dear Layer Slayer, in your most recent UI battle, you called yourself the reigning champion. What I would like to know is, how do you sleep at night knowing full well I beat both you and Design Thunder in front of thousands of designers? I'll take my answer offline. It was rigged. Obviously, there there was some uh, bias in, in in the jury, like uh, the people who were voting. There were bots. I'm pretty sure I need a recount. The layer slayer needs a recount, and the layer slayer never loses. That's that's the reality. We I know it. You know it. Everybody knows it. it just you guys had so much fun. Uh, speaking of fun, gorgeous UI course. Just want to touch on it quickly. I was so stoked when you dropped that trailer i couldn't believe like how vibrant it was <laughs> uh, it seemed finally you had this team that you just energized everything about what you're doing it's like 
There is so much creativity just in the trailer alone. So you chose product design as a career. That's a smart move. But you notice there's a lot of content about UX, theory, and research, not so much about the visual side of design. That's good stuff, for sure. But it falls short when you want to create UIs that don't look like spreadsheets. So we decided to do something about it. Welcome to our program on how to create gorgeous UIs. We're here to take you from OK design to great design. While we understand that the why is important, we're all about the how, how to get a functional UI into something you would actually want to look at. Cool thing is that while I'm your main instructor, there's a whole team who will help you on your learning adventure. One of the main things we'll talk about is colors. They are not just pretty, they are essential. They are magical. We'll get into the rainbow. Hey, Mariana. Now, same thing, but less energy. Colors, they matter. We'll talk about them. What I love is that in this course, we're going to cover a ton of stuff, like alignment, wireframing, prototyping. Learning new things can be difficult, but don't worry. The team will guide you through your journey patiently, because we all know patience can be rare. What? I'm totally patient. Right. Anyway, we'll focus on learning all the cool tricks from the pros. Type scales, color theory, responsive design, overlays, shading, grid systems. Imagine tackling complex real-world projects and crafting beautiful and pleasing UI components with engineering, comprehensive user flows. Mariana Some likes doing cool animations. Yeah, I love cool and silly animations. Sizing, proportions, gradients, basic rules of fun. Hey, we're wrapping up. Oh, but there's still so much more. By the end, you'll be designing interfaces that are not only usable, but also look great. So that's it. Join us if you're ready to elevate your UI design, going from not just good and functional, but great and gorgeous. Yo. A lot of influences probably from filmmakers you love and i want to know like is the team just where it's at now honestly like uh, any project that we take on we just try to have fun you know like uh it's it's kind of a requirement number one hey is this fun and if it's not going to be fun like do we need to do it you know uh so there's kind of a, some kind of a, lots of ways to make money yeah lots of ways to make money and if uh you know suppose uh we we and more as a team, we try to uh, work on stuff that, that is fun for us. So, uh, yeah, that trailer, we had a, a lot of fun. I, I would say that uh, it took us some time uh, because we, the editing part, and I think we were talking about the editing before, we tried with an editor, and the editor, uh, dude, dude, he wouldn't get it. And so I had to get in. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I edit videos, but I wouldn't call myself editor, but I realized like, oh my God, like, uh, there, and, and I told you this before, uh, but th it's, it's one of those times where you realize that there are some people who are, they're not good at what they do, <laughs> what they, what they what their title, their position, or their, I don't know, their profession, you will think that they're really good at that. You go to a lawyer. If you expect a lawyer to be really good at lawyering, uh, you go to a doctor and you expect doctor to be the, I don't know, just like someone who cares about doctoring. <laughs> and like, but you don't know, you don't question it because, well, I don't know anything about law. I don't know anything about like uh, medicine or like, so you just trust them, right? So you go to an editor and you trust them was like, hey, edit this. Uh, but it, on the editing thing, I kind of know my, my worry around editing. And then I get a result from the editor and I was like, dude, this is not what, what is going on? Like, uh, and uh, anyway, like, uh, then you realize like, oh, hold on. Is this how the world you question everything works? Like, is everyone just like not good at what they do? Like, and, and you don't realize it because you're, you don't know it, right? You, you, you don't question the doctor because you don't know anything about medicine. I was able to question this editor because I know a little bit about editing. So I was like, oh, dude, this is, oh my God, I'm pretty sure that like there's some, most of the people are not good at what they do. <laughs> and just like a, you go to a lawyer and chances are they're not a good lawyer, <laughs> and, but you don't know. <laughs> so anyway, just like, that's I, why recommendations are so important. I know, man. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's hard. Like once you, you know that, then you realize like, oh, dude, like you have to be very careful.
just just two things there on editing quick is that I feel you're in a fantastic place to outsource editing because you know what you want yeah, and you know how to edit and you know when someone is taking yeah. advantage. And same goes with coding and so on. Like when I didn't know anything about coding and then someone would just say like, oh, that's what I took. I, then I would pay someone else that I knew and trusted that didn't have time for the job. I said, dude, I'll yeah. pay you one hour yeah, just to take a look, just to take a look and tell me. And he's like, holy shit, dude. It's a rebuild. Oh, that is a nice hack, by the way. Like I, I hiring a an expert, an expert that you trust that you might not be able to afford them. <laughs> but it's just like, hey, but I could afford one hour of time that I know you're an expert. You're really good at this. So can you review this? <laughs> I actually like that. Take hack. a look at the design system. Yeah. Take take a look at the edit. Like how is he prepared these layers and so on? But but I want to say is that you're like a super creative guy. I I think I'm creative. And when I'm editing, honestly, I, I, I cannot feel more alive online oh, dude. than I do when I'm actually editing music and type Ooh. and color and cutting it and yeah. pausing it and like changing frame. And then I'm like, dude, now this is sick. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is what I like doing. And then I'm like, I'm like, oh, that song just doesn't, doesn't slap hard enough. I need a, 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 a higher tempo. And then it's like, you go and then now you're just dreaming through tempos. And you're like, dude, now that is, that is what I like doing. But but where I'm getting at is that the podcast is is such a hectic edit. But it's like I love the pain. I don't know what it is, but it's like, but I need someone to help prepare everything else. So like I've paid someone to help me just with the visuals, you know, the media. Like just, can you give me that? Someone give me that. And then I'm the final chef, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like outsourcing is maybe a mistake. Obviously, dude, time and all these constraints. But dude, it's a trailer for your course. You're going to feel amazing once it's done. I know, man. Like, we all did. As a team, we, we all were like... Just get it done, dude. This is what we wanted. Like, you know, like uh, suddenly the vision was realized and we all, like... Uh, I mean, in, in, in the, that's the thing because, like, uh, sometimes even when you write the script and you share the vision of what this trailer is going to be with the team, uh, they they might imagine it. And I mean, they were acting. They were there, like, also in front of the camera. Uh, delivering their lines i loved it but still th I, I suppose it's hard it was hard for them to really see the final product it was only until like i gave them the lot my edit they were like oh dude yeah yes like they, 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 they felt really excited that they're also like oh i was part of that i, I am there you know so I, I don't know it was kind of a fun experience I'm glad One Page Love could help with a little promo. Thank you, couple man. Couple sales. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. No, no, no. My pleasure. But I want to know how is that going? How is the affiliate side of things going? Oh, uh, affiliates. I think uh, we just started with some, uh, but we uh, we haven't uh, gone down the rabbit hole like uh, doing more sales because like we have been focusing on finishing the actual course because like we did a pre-sale and. Uh, we have almost like a 80% there. We have been taking our time <laughs> on finishing the course and people have been uh, just like uh, uh, taking it with us. So I think that once we're finished, we're going to go back to like, hey, okay, let's go back into sales mode again uh, because we don't want to go back into like go out there and trying to sell something that is not finished yet. Like, uh, hey, we just did something that allowed us to like give us a couple of months to, to continue working on it. So yeah, like I'll, I'll tell you later, like how that goes, but uh, I'm, I'm excited for that too. And I think you said September was the final drop of the, the content, if I that's remember. That's it. Yeah. Oh, please. I'm, I'm done. I, I, I want to move on to the next thing. And we wanted this to be like really rich and a lot of things like cover everything. Like, uh, and a, a lot of the stuff actually that, uh, on your course, you know, like on landing page tips, uh, where it's like, a, there's a lot of, uh interconnection there where it's like I, I, I want people to understand the the why of the the visual design like it's it's actually really important you know and like uh, when yes uh, people just like 
fall in love with their eyes and then they're, they're more inclined to read what you want to say or like uh, learn more about your product or click on that subscribe button. But if it doesn't have the right vibe and if it doesn't look good, it's it's going to be hard. And, and I think, uh, I don't know what, what has happened, man, but uh, maybe this is changing actually. But there was for a while, like this kind of anti-visual design amongst designers was, was like, oh, visual design is not as important. What is really important is the UX side. I, I agree that, they're, that the UX side is really important, but it's not a, it, it felt like almost like an anti-visual uh, movement, you know, where it's like almost like the anti-intellectualism, you know, that sometimes exists in the pol uh, polit political atmospheres where it's like a, they, they want to remove that. Yeah, like, and, and here it was like almost like against people who who, who like care about what you were just mentioning about the craft, about the craft. Yeah. That, that pushing the pixels, there's a, almost like a, a pushing the pixels for, for a moment was like almost kind of derogatory, you know, whereas like uh, pushing the pixels was like below like something that uh, the beginners do or something that's like when pushing the pixels is the most fun that some of us have, you know, where it's like, oh, I, I care about this. What if I do, if, if, if instead of a 300 milliseconds, I do 250 milliseconds, Ooh, I, I love that. Like it feels better. What about this easing curve versus this other easing curve? Oh, the animation now feels snappier. Like is pushing the pixels is like, uh, there's so many things that actually go into just like that feeling, that vibe that you were just talking, right? Where, about where uh, that like it speaks to also the experience it, it speaks to like uh, what you, how successful th that thing that you're trying to sell is going to be and how successful your metrics are going to be, your ROI or KPRs or whatever you want to say. A lot of that depends also on the visual and the feeling and the vibes that this. Yeah, I agree. So I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what happened, but I think we're coming back towards uh, uh, like a pre the appreciation of the craft uh, and gear. So uh, my, my two cents is that you you can like we said earlier like you make money doing lots of different things and here you are creating a course and like there's so many different types of courses you can make and you are talking about gorgeous UI let's just start there and say it's like very on topic to care about that interface yeah and craft it in the right way but but the thing when it comes to learning is there's just so much noise and all these different formats and like you want someone to feel excited when they are consuming your course. And like, how do you do that? It's with everything else. It's like all the nuances. Yeah. It's all the little subtleties. It's that little funny sound effect or like just that little laugh, yeah. you know? It's like that little personality. And like by showing you care, I'm like, this is also from the ebook, but like showing you care and people can't even pinpoint one thing there, but they're like, I just felt so excited. Yeah. I, f I loved using the UI. It's like, by doing that, by showing you care, it's like they know that this product's good and they want to apply that. And it's that snowball effect and the internet's a healthier place. I know I sound like this like yoga, hairy fairy guy, but dude, honestly, you've got to create the products that you'd want to consume. And it, That's it, it, bottom line. And, and I mean, and, and you've been someone who's been like, uh, like really championing this, like uh, with One Page Love and your newsletter, where you go and talk about these things that look and feel good, you know, <laughs> that it, like at least you op open them and it's like, oh, they're delightful. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm in a special place, you know, it's not at any other page. Uh, that, yeah, dude. So I, I don't know. I, I, I like that. Uh, you've been doing it for a while, man. You've been in it since like 2008 or something. 2008. Holy. I'm like 8,500 sites in. But seriously, dude, it's like I'll open up a submission. It was a recent one. It was Hot Corners or something. And it's like you just hovered over the CTA button and like all these things lit up. And I'm like, dude, that was taking so long. Oh, um, my God. It's hot, hot-corners.com. And it's just like so delightful. And I was like, I need more of this in my life. Wow. But, but that's what I'm saying. It's like it it motivates me. It, it tops up my tank. I just don't know what I'm going to see next. And I just keep going. I cannot believe I'm still motivated to work on the site, if I'm honest. But I love it, dude. How do you feel about uh, now... Uh, you know how people are, I mean, I, I have a theory. Uh, let, let me uh, first go with my theory. My, my theory is that, uh, let's go, uh, websites are, are going to die. They're, they're already, we have already seen the, this path we're going towards, whereas like 
nobody really goes to a website for like to interact with the person or to uh, learn more. It's actually you go to either social media, you go to, if it's a business, you do it through uh, a, a map and you read the reviews on Google. And you don't really, you, going into the websites of that restaurant that you're looking for, it's it actually almost never, you never go. So, but we're still doing that. And, and I feel like now with the LLMs and how these LLMs are getting, like how people are just like using these things into to ask them any question is not. So that makes SEO less, uh, less important. Uh, so like it's going to be more of these things, just like grabbing all the data and then learning it. And then they can spit the uh, information that you need, uh, uh, current and, uh, information that you need uh, with even more context uh, in a very smart way, in a very personalized way. So in their own format, you know, so uh, in, in their own way, like uh, you, you see this with uh, now with Google, with their own AI suggestion or the AI responses where you don't go to the, the going into someone's website is less important because now the little robots are telling you they're, they're answering the question that you have. So instantly, uh, how, what, what is going to happen? Just like, a, like, is, is this going to be a resurgence where it's like, Hey, no, actually we, we need more of the website love that we have, or I don't know what, what is going to happen? What is, what are your predictions on this or? I have thought about it, obviously, you know, I've got an inspiration gallery about websites. Uh, tra traffic's pretty steady. You know, I've learned to grow a thick skin over the years when it comes to Google's algorithm. You know, in the peak, One Page Love, I think, had 14,000 unique a day, and then Google oh changes one thing, and I have like, but then I have like eight, you know? And it's like, you, you get really emotional about that, but yeah. like, you shouldn't. It's out of my control. I'm yeah. trying to create the best resource I can for the people that love the niche that I'm, I love too. The site's brought people together. People mm. have got work, you know. Oh, I really like that. Oh, you know? dude, that's really nice. And then, so like yeah. the, the internet, I think Seth Godin said it to you, is something like if you ever create anything online where you can bring together, you know, two third parties that you don't really know and you've brought them together and they interact like you've created magic. And like, you must never forget like yeah. the internet did that. So it's like, it is quite romantic yeah. and poetic. And I, I feel like, yeah, maybe the maybe it'll get diluted or maybe, but it'll still happen in the little niche corners of the internet. I don't think that'll ever go away. Maybe they'll get smaller and smaller and smaller, but those little corners, if you decide to hang out there, will always be rich. Um, yeah. yeah. There's lots to say about the social media. Like the restaurant one's hectic because, you know, when I'm in, when I'm in Lisbon, and I'm looking for a restaurant, like I'm a trip advisor, dude. It's like, you know, yeah, they, yeah, own, yeah. they own that stuff. So Google is a weird one because, you know, like I'm like less on Google now with chat, GPT, Stack Overflow. I used to be on there all day, copying and pasting, breaking, breaking, breaking. <laughs> now, yeah. now it's like, I haven't even visited that site in months. So, so, yeah. so it's like, it's wild. This has changed in the last two years. This has completely changed. So will yeah. design inspiration have a place? I feel as long as people want to own their little corner of the internet. Dude, when I first started One Page Love, we used to joke, it's like a glorified business card. That That's what a one pager was, you know? It's like, yeah. it's just this and this for whatever yeah. niche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, maybe that's where it'll go back to a narrative where it's like, hey dude, like there's a lot of wild stuff happening out there, but like I own this domain and then this is what I I can provide. And it's like, just share this along with the people that you think. Well, and you know what I mean? It's like a direct link. It's not like, oh, Google this. Then all of a sudden there's ads everywhere. Because, you know, people like Google me, you know, like, no, 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 no. Go to publicstanley.com. And like, out, that's where the truth is. So I, I yeah, kind of where my thinking is. But dude, there's people that love being creative within a canvas of a website, man. And it's like, that is their art. I, I love that uh, analogy, which is our com comparison where it's like, a, it's a, uh, just like a glorified business card, business card, because it's true that you see it once and, and you see it and, and that will give you almost like, can I trust this company? Can I trust this person? Can I trust this yeah. restaurant because of the look Did they use good typography, <laughs> do a good uh, choice of colors or anything Do they have good photos. 
okay, maybe I, I should go, maybe I, I, I should hire their services, maybe I should buy their hamburger, you know? But, uh, but that's it. Like once you really want to know information where they are, you're not going to go into their menu with their contact and or address. You're just going to go to, well, I, I was going to say Yelp, but I, I don't think anyone uses Yelp anymore. Uh, but I, I think it's just, well, I use Google. But by the way, some people actually use Instagram and TikTok to find places, which was insane when I found that because they also have a map and stuff. So if they want to just like a like search for a restaurant, they use Instagram, which was insane for me. It was like I didn't know that that was a feature, and 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 again, it takes me to that idea where it's like, oh, people like uh, if you have a business, you you want to be there, you know, you want to be there where people are finding. So in that there is not really a website. You just have to have an Instagram profile with some nice photos, you know, it's a presence. So it, I don't know, like it's a. Uh, it's weird because like then it, the creativity is not so much on the on on, on your website or on your page. Uh, you could potentially not even have a website, and you could still be successful if you have a good hundred uh, uh, percent, uh, like a good Facebook page because a lot of people still use use it for finding stuff or uh, like a, a an Instagram or whatever those things are. It's just like I don't know. It's weird. It's it's weird. It's it's kind of cool. I don't want to rap about my stuff, but like. I'm my course, like I've got this on, online course. It's coming up. It's called Show Them. Okay. No, no. Show them.com. I got the domain. And it's just like, I like touches it. so I much on what you're saying now. It's like the big one when it comes to sites is like, you know, all the landing page nerds out there will say, like, oh, the intro copy needs to resonate with my problem and all this stuff. And like, you know, show the features and benefits and stuff. I'm saying, no, no, no. Like, sure, you can do that. But what people really want to see in a page is they w want you to show them the visuals. Show me how it works. Show me the visual transformation. Like, what was it before the service? Where am I now? And like, where are you going to take me? So like, that's yeah. the premise of this whole course. And like, how can we do that beautifully? Um, a really good one, like one I actually just reviewed today was the Screen Studio app, which is the screen recording app. You like arrive on oh, a yeah, page. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, dude, his unique. Um, selling points are, oh, it's like it's zoom and like follow. Like you, it zooms in on the screen when you like in the corner and then it follows. And dude, you arrive and the video just shows him like zooming and following. Like you've, you're there for one second and then you're thinking, oh, dude, I wonder what the UI looks like of the app. Yeah. If that's like what you're thinking. So immediately, like, you're, okay, cool. You scroll and it transports the actual video into the UI of the app as you start scrolling so, and then you see all the toolbars around and I'm just going, okay, this guy cares enough to do this. It's like, this is some software right now. I haven't read one testimonial. Like sure, the testimonial strengthen it and like you need those things in landing pages, but it's that beautiful craft of like showcasing me without reading. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's where I'm hanging out. That's where I'm hanging out for the rest of the year. Uh, I'm not talking about my course, but that's what excites me. You can tell them uh, but they're not gonna pay attention. Uh, but if you show them, you you you, you can hook them, and that yeah, it says uh, whatever, like a presentation, a website, whatever. Just like show it, don't tell it, because uh, people are too busy doing other stuff, and you have like a couple of seconds of their attention. So uh, better use uh, that time very well. Three ways to persuade: you can tell them copywriting, you can get others to tell them. That's testimonials, mm -hmm. social proof, or you can just show them, or you can just show them. Yeah. So I got a question here from Josh Lowe from Webflow. Pablo, you are known for doing so much from blush, live streaming, public speaking, running a team, creating AI projects. I mean, the list goes on and it's a lot to handle. And I don't know how you do it, but you just seem to not take yourself too seriously and always have fun. So my question is, what's the secret to you having a lighthearted and playful approach to life? I, I, I'll have to say that I disagree a little bit with uh, the, the idea that I that we don't take it seriously. I think we do take fun and seriously if if, if that's a uh, I like that uh, if that makes sense whereas like we we do think that it's important to care about the details for us it's, it's important that things feel right. And, and if it's going to take us a little bit longer to get it there, like we'll take 
that extra time and that extra effort. And so that speaks that we do care about uh, doing things, uh, putting things at a level that we feel comfortable putting out there. Uh, but also we care about a, like I was mentioning before, working on things that we believe in and that excite us and motivate us. So, uh, and then that, because we take that seriously, then it feels like it's, it's, we're just having fun, you know, it's just like, oh, you're just, you're just playing, you're not working. <laughs> and it's like, well, yeah, like, uh, can, can, can we have both? Can, can we work and play? When you start doing th things that way, then doing more of that stuff is, is easier too. And, and it's, yeah. And contagious. And it's kind of addictive also. It's just like, oh, I just want to do more stuff. Uh, when, when the ethos is like a, keep it fun, keep it light, keep it, uh, and, and also uh, keep it in a way that you feel proud when you put it out there. So I, I suppose that that has, uh, allowed us to, to just keep creating more stuff. And I say us, because it's, it's not just me. It's just like, it's a team and I really, I'm, I'm more like out there taking credit <laughs> for what the actual team is doing. So like, uh, we, we just try to work on things that, uh, motivate us and, and I think that, uh, and, and also I'm a big spammer and since I'm a spammer, it looks like I do a lot. But I'm pretty sure a lot of people are just like being as effective and efficient, but they're not big spammers like me and they're not uh, out there being egomaniacs and saying like, oh, look at all the things that I do. <laughs> so I, I think that's that's also one of the differences. Okay. So you, you've made some effort to work in public and you've assigned time for all platforms. Yeah. And that effort must showcase some fun. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And that's why he, Josh feels this way. Yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, hey, you we do take it serious and, and, and sometimes there has been people who just like enter our team and they think that that's or ethos where it's like oh we're not taking it that seriously and and they realize like oh no hold on this is very serious stuff and they realize that You're i'm in the business of fun we're, we're, exactly and i, I don't know like a, a keep up uh, the team um, just keep working on things that uh, you believe in and things are just going to fall in place <laughs> It's a great answer. So you're speaking about details and I'm just transitioning into Musho quick. Um, you know, your tagline on Musho AI is with a simple prompt, Musho gets your design 80% of the way. So you have time to obsess over the fine little details, okay? In our lifetime, will AI ever handle those fine details? I believe it's a starting to. Uh, it's a starting to. Like uh, we see it with uh, code. We see it with... They can handle the details if you ask them to care for the details. You have to be like very... Uh, proactive and very specific about what you want and uh, AI at least in code it can do it and and, and or at least it will try it will say that it, it did it <laughs> even if it didn't <laughs> and sometimes it's just like yay I finished it was like it works no you didn't <laughs> but okay I, uh, yeah it's it's, uh, it, it's always very uh, positive uh, these uh, robots uh, but I I think it still has to come from uh, the human that is like uh, the like at our, like I, I'm surprised at how good these things are. Just like following uh, uh, your your ideas and like uh, uh, delivering on different options on on the ideas that that you have in your mind. And like if you are very specific about what you want, they are able to do those things. Whereas like, hey, no, I want this color to be like this, and I want the animation to be uh, like this, and and I want instead of a grid, I want it to be flex, and I want it to be using this call. Like all those things, it understands. So, but you still have to be the one that tells it. Because if you just ask it, oh, I just want a landing page. It has my all my info. It make it beautiful. It's going to make crap. Uh, I mean, it's going to make well depend on what vibe you're going for. But if you're going for an anti-design early two thousands or late nineties, 
vibe, then it's great, <laughs> which is kind of, there's a kind of a revival on anti, like corporate design things. So like it's, and, and AI is really good at that stuff. Uh, but if you start asking it just like, hey, like use modern uh, uh, CSS standards and use a um, uh, modern language and, or like, hey, use a color theme that does this and that, like it's really good at that stuff. So let, let's say that there's three things the well three stages of a project where it's like the strategy or planning then is the whole process of like the production like a create in it and then there's the finer details right and like in films it's like the pre-production production and and post-production on the editing and all that stuff right and the editing and all that and the sound effects and all that i think uh uh usually the production the part in the middle is the one that takes the longest uh, and, and on, on, like on product, uh, uh, development too, where it's like a, hey, on the actual creation of the thing. And sometimes uh, you, you, you spend a lot of time on planning and then you, you don't have a lot of time on your, the actual production and put it out and go to market. Right. So you want to reduce the time on the planning so you can spend more time on the production and, and just like actually building this thing, you know, and then you have to, your deadline is here and. Do you have time for the little details? So historically, we have seen the product development, like we spend a lot of time on the middle part, like on the production, like on the development of things, and then caring about the details, like uh, those those finer things, like we don't have a lot of time at the, at the end. And, and like you, like as designers, sometimes we're like fighting for for that button to to be that color that you want. And you ask the developers to do it, and they say like, dude, that's not important. You know, like, a, have you seen what the button does? Like, it, it can open this. And, and yeah, I, I agree. But th that's also because, like, we spend so much time on that production and now we don't have time for the final details. What I see now that's changing is I think that, like, uh, uh, AI is getting really good at is on the middle part and actually on, and, and also on the strategy, if you want, that, want it to, where it's like at least give you ideas and it's good at that. You can reduce those two things. So you have more time. So we all have more time for those final details on that, on 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 that uh, whimsical like uh, uh, delight that we were mentioning before. That sometimes it's it's kind of surprising when yeah, you. it's the joy. It, it's kind of surprising when you go to a nap and that where they care about that because like oh my god, it's it it shouldn't it shouldn't be like that. It should be that it all. Uh, uh, products, we should have the time to care about those things, but sometimes we just don't because the reality is that uh, deadlines, budgets. we have to deliver something out there. Uh, yeah, and, and 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 you just spend so much time on the production that you you didn't have time for those little things at the end. And I think AI is changing that, where we'll have a little more time for the final details and iterations, and just like going back and it's like, hey, what about this? What I'm trying different things. So I I I don't know, like I I. So going back to the 80% and all that, I think it's that 80% that, that is all the production and all the, the basics. Uh, uh, now it's reduced to just uh, a couple of hours, <laughs> maybe. Uh, well, depends on what you're doing. But I think uh, now developers can use AI to just like get all the groundwork done. So now, hey, suddenly we have all this extra time that we can put on uh, making this uh, feel uh, nicer. And, and and even just like hey, work on that copy. Because sometimes just like copy, man, is is huge. It's huge. And anyway, they, and those are the things that you forget about, and you know they're there, and you see it, but it's like oh, we don't have time. We have to chip this. So uh, I'm excited for that. That now we have that. Rasmus Anderson put it as he said it so simply, where he said, "Tasks that took us four days with code." can now take us four hours and he's like is that not yeah. just a good thing he's like you can just walk outside he's like this is great so yes you have time for that experimentation with that final finesse and the designs and so on so creative markets if i'm not mistaken i think it was them they gave you an option to label your product if ai helped you generate the final output do okay. you think it's do you think it's a good thing like where you transparent that this was influenced? I think that there's, if we should just assume that everything does AI help, 
that, that, like it, seeing something and and not assuming that there was some kind of uh, or anything that is modern, uh, anything that is like a, a with an output from a level of quality that that is suspected now, uh, you, you you should assume that there was AI involved in it, and you shouldn't see it as a bad thing. I I I I want to think that, and where like hey, the, a I'm, AI is just another tool and the tool set, and and I'm pretty sure that anyone who doesn't use it is just being dumb. I guess it's just being like it, you're. Well, I'm not. I don't know if dumb, but at least you are not uh, adapting. And I, yeah, I agree with you. Now, I I I see the value of putting a different label, which would be the hundred percent organic, hundred uh, percent handcrafted, uh, handcrafted, human made. Okay, I can see that kind of value. I would say the default should be everything is. There was AI involved. We should just assume that AI is involved on anything, anything that we do now. Like even, like uh, any research, any uh, uh, any uh, googling, even just googling, just like there's AI involved on all that. So like, where 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 does the line of a uh, uh, creative market put? Where it's like, oh, you can do these AI things, but not these. Like, is is it more of the imaging? Is it more on the sound? Like on all the creative side of stuff. I think of uh, generative fill in Photoshop, where it's like you can expand the background in like one command. Yeah, absolutely incredible. It's like it's so fantastic. Like expand the sea and the land in the distance to the left one second. Boom. Okay, and it's like, oh my god! But then I- people are like, no, 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 I'm gonna do that manually. Are you crazy, dude? There's so much more important things to do than expand the background. So anyway, that's just like my my sort of take <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like honestly, like the, this podcast. Like I pumped in food. I was like ChatGPT, dude. Like I got this dude. He's from he's from Mexico, you know. I I like I know about Taco Tuesday, but I need all the days of the week, and I need food associations, dude. And it just it gave me siesta. It <laughs> gave me siesta Sunday as a suggestion that he's gonna be full. After eating all week, <laughs> I was like, "Dude, you are hilarious!" Oh, uh, dude, it, it... should we break into a second intermission? This one is called "Overrated, Underrated." Okay, so I'm gonna give you a topic, a brand, a person, and you just need to tell me if you feel like it's overrated, underrated, or properly rated. If you feel like the world has like an even eye on it, you got it. Okay, background music in video tutorials. Oh, underrated, man. Yeah, very important. Peanut butter M and M's. Ah, uh-huh. overrated. Variable fonts. <laughs> <laughs> underrated. Photoshop. With all of their new AI stuff, I'm going to say properly rated. It used to be overrated in my book. It, it's got it a little bit like more in the middle. Claude AI. Oh, underrated, man. It's really good. Damn. Chat-based UIs. Oh, overrated. Definitely. Naive. Optimism. Underrated. Hugely odd. Home offices. Uh, overrated. Elon Musk. Oh, hugely overrated. Carlos Santana. Oh, oh. oh my, uh, underrated. I have to I have to say underrated. If not, I'm going to get a lot of... You're going to get canceled, dude. My lat- <laughs> Latinas friends <laughs> hated me. <laughs> Fender Stratocaster. Uh, uh, underrated. Crypto. Overrated, man. I'm sorry. Hugely overrated, hugely inflated, hugely hyped. Lastly, NFTs. Oh man, I, I've been through that world. I can tell you, hugely overrated, and I, I, I was there. And it's, uh, I, man, it, and it's sad. It's sad what everything that happened there. So I can tell you, yeah, hugely hyped, hugely overrated. We don't have to go too deep down the journey, uh, you know, if you don't want to. But February fourteenth, Roboto's. Robotos announced the login off indefinitely, and yeah. and I I want to know you know it was a massive journey, wild ride, lots of highs. I'm sure there was equal lows, you know, just based on other other NFT community stories that I've heard. And I want to know, did you get any success from that world that influenced your next chapter of investing? Because I remember you 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 saying the the term that you were like begging money from VCs to draw doodles. Like I remember you always said that, like you were, you just wanted to make doodles and you had to beg v- VCs. But then all of a sudden 
not all of a sudden, but you started to invest. And was there like a, you know, a good, a good result out of the NFT journey that helped you fund that next chapter with a team? Um, yes, I have uh, become an investor, but more of a scout. I mean, it's, it's really not my money. <laughs> so it's uh, other people's money. And then I just decide uh, on, on what they should invest. So it's... Uh, it's not that journey is not related. I, I suppose everything is related and everything is connected, but it's not really related to the NFT stuff. Uh, it's more I'm uh, I'm I'm, I, I'm with Kleiner Perkins and I'm one of the scouts in Kleiner Perkins. So I and I focus specifically on design driven teams and just like a, if there's any designers in the founding team, I want to invest. <laughs> it's just a huge bias that I have. But I think it's a good bias uh, to have. We all, we all have biases and I'm, I'm okay like having that bias. Uh, and and but but yeah, like a, a, the NFT space, I, I think it was uh, like a, that journey, I learned a lot. And so I take that as a huge success. Uh, as in, I, I met a lot of people, who, like incredible, beautiful people like very supportive people the, the thing is that I also we also got to experience uh, a lot of noise and a lot of uh, things that we're not expecting we're not uh, we're, we're not used to where it's like a lot of uh, the, the hype and the whole side of uh, investing and and the whole feeling that feels like a very that quick quick money quick rush gambling Quick money, quick like this. Uh, well, we I, I can say that we got into NFTs because of the promise of uh, uh, art, uh, digital art, uh, ha suddenly having uh, uh, a place for it to be uh, validated and for artists to be able to use uh, 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 crypto to be able to say this is something I made. This is authentic, and 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 I can uh, have a, a way for me to distribute it with my audience, and in a way that is verifiable, in a way that is that feels real, that a little bit analogous to the real world, where it's like a, a piece of art that is like uh, non fungible, that is like uh, is the only one that exists, and in the in the physical world that exists, and we. We understand that, but in the digital world, like, hey, you could just like right click save or any image. And uh, why would you want to uh, 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 like uh, pay for a digital piece? And here it was like the, the promise was like, hey, now artists can can actually validate that I you can see on my wallet, you can see the, the provenance and the history that I was transparency that I was the one who created it. Or I was the one who who sold it, and then after that, these are the the hands of the the people who have had it. The transparency, and not only that, if you want to really support the artist, you can, uh, you you're you get a compensation of a, a small percentage for like a whatever sale that they get, and you know what? That helps the artist keep creating and keep making the world a more beautiful place. That promise, that's what got us into this, and. And um, I think it was, uh, uh, the thing is that, well, uh, other interests like one <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> other interests that uh, we were. It was poetic. Yeah. And, and I think uh, we were not uh, prepared for like, uh, they thought that this was some kind of uh, investment opportunity for them to make money and I, I'm 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 okay with that. Hey, eh? like they use your uh, your I don't know your abilities and whatever you want, right? But the thing is that we're just not really interested in that. We're interested in just like making doodles, you know, <laughs> and like uh, and and making art. And suddenly we had to I don't know be part of this hype machine. So whatever doodle you make, you had to bring value and say I don't know. Like it was. Suddenly, it was kind of a responsibility to manage the market and manage like the value of things in this volatile 
world of uh, of crypto and almost like an investment. I was like, dude, like I don't know. Number one, I don't know anything about that. And uh, I'm also, I don't care. So like in, you investing in what you thought it was like an investment, like a, a smart investment was totally wrong because like, we don't care about that and we're not going to do that. So, but suddenly we had this pressure to like, like the, suddenly that was her responsibility. It's like, no, dude, like that was just my drawing. Like imagine going, like buying uh, an, a piece of art, like a physical piece of art from an artist in a convention or a, I don't know, like a gallery or something, then grabbing it, putting it on your house and then going and pestering the artist. What are you doing? Well, are, are you doing any advertising? Are you doing any marketing? So my piece that is in my house is more valuable. Come on, come on. Come on, do more, do more, because I my piece that I bought over there has to be more valuable. I was like, you you wouldn't do that in the physical world, right? You couldn't go to the art. You wouldn't expect that. Uh, so, but here in, the, in, in this, oh, it's a grifting. Yeah, and this place, like I realized, like oh, this these people weren't really like uh, getting or doodles because they liked it. No, they saw it as a way for later to resell it at a higher price, which I'm okay. Like, hey, do it, but. Don't make that our responsibility, <laughs> you know? So did the artists, um, did they win by by like mass exodus and then decreasing the value of everything? Did the artists win and the VCs lost money? Or is it sort of like the VCs always made money and cash out the right times? I say the word VC is not the right term, but it's like the, if the artists still had fun creating and then left with stronger bonds and friendships, and they just returned to what they were always doing. It's a win for an artist, right? I, I, I can tell you that for a lot of artists, this was a very uh, very bad experience, like a very uh, a, a burning out experience, and like an experience where like suddenly you don't want to do art, and suddenly you don't want to be uh, uh, doing that stuff that you actually loved. And I, I actually went through something like that where... Uh, it it was not a. <laughs> it, I I don't know. Like suddenly, I realized like oh, like because like it, once you like someone, uh, it's in that space and grab a piece uh from you, then what they don't want you to do is creating more art because the more you do, the less valuable their piece that they got is because they want scarcity. They don't want you to keep creating. They want you to stop because if if you stop then that piece is more special, which goes against totally what I do. It's like, for me, it's more. I want to keep doing it. I want to keep doodling. And, but suddenly, like, I was being asked not to do it anymore. Like, actually, like, I, like you you mentioned about, like, uh, uh, robotics is stopping. Uh, this was, like, something that I had been dealing for for a while. Where it's like, hey, the community is just, like, a, a lot of the people in the community, I would say, amazing people, beautiful people, very supportive. But oh my God, man, the ones that were just there for the rest were really, I don't know, like it was a really traumatic experience. And suddenly, like, hey, we're just like as a team, I didn't have a way to pay the team, man, because there was no money. Like, oh, uh, and I, I said like, hey, you know what? Let's uh, let's create a course. I know that uh, that's something I, I, I know how to do and then. And hey, we can sell this, and I can keep paying you guys because, like, <laughs> like uh, paying uh, a team is, is is expensive, and paying taxes and all that stuff, you know. So, like, hey, let's let's create a little bit of money, capital, so we can uh, uh, keep doing this because this NFT thing this is not really making us any any money at all. So, I uh, we launched the, the course that we we're talking about. Well, the NFT people got really mad that we had a course. <laughs> <laughs> really? It got extremely mad. Yeah, they hated the idea that we would spend a, even a little bit more time on something that wasn't and not make more more marketing and more hype for their uh, uh, digital asset. And they like really just like it. I, I was like, okay, you know what? This is it. That's it. No more. I I, I don't understand. Good what, call. Uh, at what point? this is going to end. Like uh, you're going to be questioning every decision that I make from now on. Like, and, and we're not making anything from this. We've been like for, I, and, and that's the thing, that's another thing that people think that I got rich or something from this. 
I did not. I didn't make any money from this. Like all of that money, number one is like it went back to the U.S. government because they taxed the hell out of you. And, and that was one. And another one is like, hey, making a team and making a product development and a lot of things that we did. Cost that money. cost money. A lot of money. So all of that went back to that. And wow. But they think that, I don't know, I pocketed and they were calling me grifter and just like a rock puller. And everything. I was like, dude, I don't care. Like, call me whatever you want, but um, I'm, I'm not going to tolerate anymore this thing where we're, we're, we're trying to do things that we love and you're just like questioning that. And, and also like things that we need to do to, to keep surviving, you know? So like, uh, to keep it sustainable. Keep, yeah. So it's like, okay, guys, I'm sorry. Like you guys suck. So goodbye. And so uh, most, I, a lot of people do not suck by the way, but also then do. And I was like, Hey, there was a good experience. I learned a lot. Thank you for all the fish. It's toxic for your headspace. And you know what? I chatted to Gulsha a little bit about NFTs. You know, he did Rubber Duck Party. Ooh, yeah. And he did Slime. Oh, dude, yeah. He did a lot of really and cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really dig the guy, man. And he, the way he, so I could see he wanted to say these things you, are, you, have, you have said. But he was more like, he just said it very elo eloquently. And he just said, I loved making NFTs. I, and I would do it forever oh. if it was oh, sustainable, man. but it's simply not. Yeah. And, and you know what? I'm not even talking about that, but dude, it was so cool. Like we built a world, like we built a world, we built a, a way for Times Square. Uh, uh, yeah. Like uh, we built, a, a, or, or we built Robopolis and Robopolis was a, a place where all the robots live. We also uh, built a whole ethos around it and a whole like a uh, lore and we built a world for uh, these guys that were called muletos. And dude, we created so many stories and so many things, so many, so much code and so much art, a lot of crap we created. So creative. Like, it was never enough. Whatever we created, and, and that was the worst thing. They would say like, guys, why are you not making stuff? And as soon as you made something, no. Like, why are you making it? Why, why are you launching it? They wanted just the idea of it, hype is about something that could happen, you know, not something once they have it, they're like, oh, okay, but well, what's next? I, I I want to be able to 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 have more hype, like, and hype is more on the uh, is based on speculation. It's all the speculation. That was the whole thing, and we didn't know. People didn't want more drawings. They just wanted the speculation about like the upcoming thing because speculation like uh, drives uh, hype, drives people speculating and making assumptions. And But as soon as you deliver on something, whatever it is, even if it covers all the check, well, checklist of all the things that they wanted, it's not enough. No, no, no. But what is next? What is the next thing that I can speculate about? It's like, oh, dude, like at it, no. that got really tiring and, and, and so that machine you need to feed it the hype machine nah dude exhausting but it was a lot of fun for 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 a while it was a lot of fun and but it suddenly got a little bit weird like just being in a band yeah. going on tour calling it a day okay let's, let's finish things, things up quick on Lumi and then we're gonna have one more question on the outro awesome Lumi is exciting man I mean, I've used Musho. It's cool. It has its place. But Lumi, I like pump in the word like cosmetics. And dude, the, the results are good. The results are really good. You know, compared to something like Unsplash, which I still think the curation is great. And, you know, I feel a lot to do with your guys' success is curation. Yeah. It's like there are very little poor images. And I, I have a funny feeling you, you have like, you know, you said you're in the business of fun. Lumi's in the business of curation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Anyway, I'm really fascinated with monetization. And I might have seen a couple of Webflow logos <laughs> on a few people. <laughs> you saw that? And I oh, my God, dude. <laughs> like, that was just something I internal it, where we're like, hey, like, it was actually some internal thing that I just like sent to the team. Hey, dude, like, we could potentially just like, a, by the way, we haven't even told Webflow or anything. I did it like manually, like I added to some shirts and stuff. And it was like, and I, it was more of a, an internal proposal 
where it's like, hey, what if we had uh, ads that didn't look like ads? It was more like, hey, like uh, it, we we should clearly put it that this is an ad, right? Or like uh, for legal reasons, but uh, but more like, hey, it's just part of the content, you know? And hey, maybe it's a person with a Webflow T-shirt, or maybe the Webflow logo appears in a computer or something. In and, and this was more of an internal idea, but just to sell it, I actually put it, I put it on the actual site. But we haven't talked to Webflow or anything. Yeah. I can't go down this road, but um, I, oh, man, no, okay. I'm just going to say it quickly. Show them, show them.com. I know it's a banger domain and there's so much I can do with it. And the more I went down this road, I was thinking I could do sort of sub courses to do with the same concept of showing them mm -hmm. and i've actually been curating in notion all these different sub courses and unless i had a whole bunch that i could actually offer and teach and show examples it, it's not a green light but i've already got show them email marketing like in your emails show me visual transformation and there's so many great examples but dude i promise you i have got show them like brand proposals you have literally just gone to the end of everything where it's like, dude, you could mail them and say, hey, I got an idea. Let's have a meeting. That's what yeah. someone's literally going to do. Hey, let's have a meeting and we can discuss ideas. Or it's like you can visually mock it up to them. Or you say, hey, dude, visit this URL. Your logos are there, man. Yeah, exactly. Free on me. Free on me. Yeah. But this is what I'm thinking. Dude, talk about like getting your foot in the door, man. Well done. Yeah. Dude, that excites me a lot, eh? Thank you, man. Yeah, it excites me it's, a lot. It's a, uh, and, and and that that was going to be the next step. Where it's like, hey, let, now let's uh, send an email to uh, the Webflow team. Where it's like, hey, look, do you want me to cut uh, this other podcast? Uh, do, do, uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> no, okay, no, that's right, all right, good. Right. Like uh, maybe by yeah, cool. when the podcast is out, uh, the the Webflow team will. It'll be now. live. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm a huge fan of the team, man. Like, I uh, obviously you know they're sponsoring One Page Love and the podcast, but dude, dude just just integrating with them and the way we brainstorm and like we need to just think of stuff that's creative you know like not a, not the norm you know yeah um big fan big fan uh, but um big okay, fan that was too. my question like monetization well uh, lumi started more as a tool uh, uh an internal tool uh because we wanted the mucho generations uh number one to be uh uh more efficient just like a, a, a faster uh and also uh, what you're talking about, curation. We wanted the images to look good, you know? So because a big part of a, of a website, if, even if it's just a wireframe, put a nice photo where there should be a logo and, and a logo uh, and a photo, not just that looks nice, but also in context, it makes sense. You're halfway there. Then you, you're always, yeah, halfway there. But the thing is that images, man, number one, like if you wanted to do it, uh, via like every time it cr will create a new image. Well, it was costly. It was a slow and the results were not good. Like uh, using stable diffusion and different models, just like always like, eh, meh. Get some and, funny hamburgers, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, no, let's, let's actually curate our own collection of images. Like in, in a very also, uh, with a point of view, this image is kind of a point of view. And this is like what you're calling about curation, where it's like, hey, there's a human behind uh, and, and, and a, a, a human team with a specific way of seeing the world and how they picture with a style and a, and a, and, and, and a taste that they want to express, you know? So Lumi is, it, they're AI images, but there is an, uh, they're humans like uh, having with, with unique perspectives, you know, where like uh, their own taste, with experiences and insights, even the there's a hybrid. Yeah, and now exactly the thing is that there you're going to expect. Oh, well, I, I want this specifically something. You're not going to get that. It's more like stock images made with AI, but still curated by by humans. And that's a I I think that there's a there's going to be more and more on that because uh, uh, it. You see now AI, they can do anything, right? Uh, well, almost anything. And the thing is that when you have so much of this stuff, then you get a lot of noise and you get a lot of crap and a lot of things that are not good. And it's almost like uh, those vintage stores that you go and uh, they have 
really nice curated used clothing that they actually went into those uh, mountains because there's places where they just like have mountains of uh, clothing, but they went and selected the ones that are actually really nice and they put it in a store, right? And they're, they're charging you a premium and they're, they're allowing you not to go into the mountain of uh, smelly clothes. Uh, the, like uh, we, we call them sobre ruedas over here in Mexico. So uh, empacas also, which is like a, just like used stuff. So they went there and cur they did the curation. They put it in a nice looking vintage store where you're going to feel nice and you're going to uh, going to be like, oh, this is nice, right? Because they, they already had a taste and had a point of view and they put it in a, in a nice packaging. So this is kind of what we're doing. And it's like, hey, we're, we're doing like a, uh, we're going in there and just like a reducing the noise for you. And now you, whatever you pick there, uh, there's going to be a bias or bias. Uh, but also if, if you like our bias, uh, then you're going to like it. Now, there's some biases you want to avoid, where it's like a, you want the images to be inclusive and, and, and you want to be uh, representative of just like a, a, a really broad audience. So we have been careful about trying to be like a, have images that are not just like all like uh, blonde, blue-eyed people. Yeah. And well, but not dudes, like women. Like it's, it's usually like if you go into image generators and you ask for a person, it will be a, a, a blue-eyed, skinny, uh, blonde woman, <laughs> which is like, uh, I suppose like that's their default. In, but if you have to be very specific with these things and just like, hey, I, I want, would you prompt and structure them in a way that they, they can still do it. Well, some things, no, dude. Like if for some things that just like don't have enough data, so they will create weird stuff. Uh, but uh, you create that and then uh, we, we try to be very uh, inclusive. But we know that we have biases too and there are some things that we will not even come or... Uh, and. Uh, we don't we don't even think about so we try to also bring other artists from different uh, parts in the world it's like a hey, uh create your own things that represent your culture too and represent the, the types of images you would like to use you know and i love that, that. so uh, and, and that's why we I also saw the names in the header yeah these are the top contributors different artists so taste is your competitive advantage over all the other ai stock sites and I feel like that is, that is though, you guys do have flavor. You have experience in design. You appreciate, you know, like we've talked about the whole podcast, the subtleties and like, why is that image better than that image? Well, there's, I can tell you a million reasons, but if you have no taste, you have no idea why that's a bad image. Um, and you got to lean in it. But I loved what you said there about time saving. And that's one reason why one page loves so good value is that, you know, if you just want references to app landing pages it's like it, google images is going to get you some bad stuff pinterest does a decent job sometimes but there's a lot of like stuff that's not real everything on one page love was a site that launched yeah and it's like that's value like why did they use these things in the page so anyway again time saving though so your taste your creation time saving do this a bad ai stock sites out there and <laughs> must admit like there's those those like i was saying cosmetics and stuff wow dude like placeholder images even for someone who's creating templates to, to sell. Like you want to create a fictitious yeah. cosmetic brand. It's like, dude, you're not going to look further than your site. Pablo, let's wind things down, man. Let's wind things down. This has been a fantastic conversation. Thanks for taking so much time. I know your schedule is like absolutely nuts. I got a question here from someone called Miggy from Figgy. <laughs> Hi friends, the Notorious PNG here. One question that I have is, what's a piece of advice that you would give to someone feeling disenchanted with the current state of the product design industry? If someone is in, in that place, like, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't tell, ask them to just like, hey, keep trying that same thing, you know? Like, hey, try different things. And those different things might be actually other creative endeavors. Like, hey, like, have you tried making music? Have you tried acting? Have you gone into other things that might just like spray painting spray painting yeah that would just like uh, get your creative juices flowing because uh, it might be not so much about specifically uh, 
product development or uh, product design or whatever it is, it might be that you you haven't tried other things outside of that that will like get you thinking in different ways and will those simulations from outside from other things will allow you to be motivated once you come back and start I don't know like uh, going back to product design because like those things like somehow they're, they're related everything is connected and, and you're going to see things out there they are going to inspire you to go back and put them on on Figma or Webflow or whatever and on, on pixels so I I I step away, top up the inspiration tank elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. And find excuses. Uh, but those excuses could be like a startup music project and use AI to, use, to start your own music project. Like this, By the way, it's, they're so good. Anyway, but hey, make, make your own band or something. And well, you're going to need a, going to need an app or you're going to need a, a website for it. So, so that you're going to be very excited about designing the website for that. Uh, but like it, it comes from, from a different thing. It's a great answer. You know, we're ending off the season of this episode. I normally ask, you know, the guests, where can people follow you online? But, you know, you're searchable. I want to know how can people follow your band <laughs> and let us know about that gig that you have planned. Yeah. Um, uh, thanks. But by, by the way, thank you for for all the questions. You just did a lot of research. It's uh, really nice. And I seen uh, your earlier interviews in it. You put a lot of effort into this and it's uh thank you. It's really cool to 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 get here and and get these interesting questions and questions that feel more personal and not just uh generic questions. That I mean, I, I understand that sometimes uh, that's all you can do, but uh no, you you went the extra mile and we kept talking about the detail and this podcast uh, has that too, you know, and podcast interview in form. Appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, well, but I think you can just like on Spotify search for Pablo Stanley and have a couple of songs only. I have a ton of songs. I have like 40 something songs that I haven't released because I, I don't know. I've, that is one of the things that I am actually a little bit embarrassed. That That is... Uh, I, I'm not so embarrassed about like I, my designs and my doodles and eh, whatever. I just like move forward, right? But I haven't been able to uh, uh, get, get, remove that kind of uh, whatever chain or um, what if people don't like it and questioning that you, uh, as a creative, sometimes you do to yourself. Like music is, is, is I have a ton of music that I haven't released. And but hey, follow me, Pablo Stani, and if I have to get a, a little bit more followers, maybe you would inspire me to put more stuff. Uh, but also, oh, I have another one uh, that is called Dead Stanleys, and this is a punk band that I had when I was a teenager. But we're old, we're fat, we're just like middle aged. Awesome, Pablo, dude, thank you, man. That's all I gotta say. I hope uh, to meet you in real life sometime. Well, cool, man. Well, whenever you're around, I'll give you the taco tour.